We replaced one of the AMD Ryzen APU heat sinks, the integrated heat spreader with a copper one from Rocket Cool. Technically, the one I just held up, the AMD included one is also copper, but it's a nickel plated copper and it has a bit less surface area than what we have here. This is basically the same product as when we reviewed the Intel one from Rocket Cool, except obviously larger and custom made for the Ryzen APUs. Today, we're gonna look and see if the copper custom IHS actually does anything thermally and whether it's worth it or not. Before that, this is brought to you by the correct pronunciation of GIF, sponsored by NVIDIA's GeForce Experience and MSI's 1080 Jamin X. We use GeForce Experience's Shadow Play to capture Jamin Play footage of popular games like Grand Theft Auto V and PUBG. Fun fact, the G stands for GIF. Learn more at the link in the description below to grab Shadow Play or the MSI GTX 1080 Jamin X. The major difference with the Rocket Cool Intel heatsink that we tested previously was that it has slightly more surface area than the stock Intel IHS, and that gave it a bit of an advantage for cooling. This one isn't as much that way. AMD and Ryzen IHSs are basically perfectly flat on the top. They don't have the chamfered edges like the Intel ones do, and that's kind of where Rocket Cool is able to gain some of their surface area with the Intel copper heatsink that they made. Again, they're both copper heat sinks, IHSs. It's just that one is nickel plated and one's not. Not a huge difference other than a non nickel plated one is really hard to scrub liquid metal off of. But if you're not doing what we do, that's pretty much an irrelevant point. When you are doing any kind of delitting, what we've learned from Intel and now from AMD is that the thermal performance difference is not just from removing the stock TIM and replacing it with liquid metal. We use thermal grizzly conductor knot but also removing the silicone adhesive that sits between the IHS and the substrate. That creates a bit of an air gap between the dye and the IHS, and they fill it with thermal paste, so it's not like it's just air, but having that much extra thermal paste means that you have that much more material to go through to transfer your heat to the copper, which is the IHS, and eventually to your actual heat sink that's mounted to it. Having any kind of interface is suboptimal. Ultimately, we need them to fill imperfections in surfaces to account for manufacturing tolerance issues, like again, with the air gaps that are created from silicone adhesive on both the APUs and the Intel CPUs. And so we need a thermal interface, but because we're individual users and we're willing to spend the, well, take the risk and spend a bit of time, you can improve cooling overall by delitting. This is something we already showed with the R32200G previously, where we overclocked it kind of lightly. The point of the overclock wasn't to push it far, but was to generate a lot of heat, which we did. And then tested it and saw a significant improvement, more than 10 degrees in a lot of cases. This time, we're doing the same thing, except we're taking two new tests here. One is with the copper IHS from Rocket Cool, the raw copper we'll call it IHS. And the other one is with silicone adhesive removed completely versus not removed, so that we can see how much of the difference is a result of the IHS change and how much is a difference as a result of the silicone adhesive removal. So for testing methodology, as always, go to the link in the description below for the article where we'll talk more about how this was tested, what software was used, all of those questions. If you have questions, go to the article. What we're testing today is a few main things that you need to pay attention to. One is stock CPU with silicone adhesive unmodified and with thermal paste from AMD, complete factory stock. The next one, stock CPU with a stock IHS from AMD and with liquid metal, thermal grizzly conductor knot in this case. The next one, stock CPU with stock IHS, liquid metal and silicone adhesive removed. And then finally, the copper IHS from Rocket Cool without any silicone adhesive. So it's that, that pretty much gives us a full sweep of everything. Let's go through the performance tests. So getting straight to it, we see the Rocket Cool copper IHS is the highest performer on the chart exiting error margins and plotting a two degree improvement over the next best, which is the stock IHS with the silicone adhesive completely removed. That marks us at 28.1 degrees Celsius over ambient for T-dye. Both of these tests used Thermal Grizzly Conducta Knot, which we'll link below, and had the silicone adhesive completely cleaned off of the substrate and the IHS. The next test is our delitted thermal result with silicone adhesive still present on the substrate, but with liquid metal applied and obviously a delitted processor. That had us at 32.6 degrees over ambient, showing a four degree improvement to 28.1, where we ran the same test, but without the silicone adhesive, with it completely cleaned off. The reduction in the gap between the IHS and dye is responsible for this performance uplift, 
Note that this is outside of error margins. For reference, we previously measured the stock 2200G with stock TIM and adhesive at 47 degrees Celsius over ambient, although it was overclocked, so not that stock. And that marked minimally a 14 degree reduction to our D-lid with liquid metal. D-lidding and painstakingly removing all of the adhesive got us another couple of degrees. The Rocket Cool IHS does offer benefits that exit error margins and are measurable, and it's to the tune of about 2 degrees Celsius. Not world rending, but certainly measurable. So going back to the Coffee Lake one then, if you didn't see it, we put this on the 8700K and it was 20 bucks. Our conclusion with this was that we observed about a four to five degree improvement with the custom Rocket Cool IHS. And for that side of things, we said basically it's 20 bucks. This isn't going to change the game a lot for you in terms of overclocking, but for a piece of copper, it's pretty damn impressive performance uplift to have an extra four degrees of headroom when this is what you're changing. You'd be hard pressed to find four degree differences between a lot of the liquid coolers on the market. So that alone was impressive. But again, it's not something that you purchase looking to increase your overclock in significant ways. It's really, it's a, it's a way to give yourself an excuse to have something fun to do with computers for an afternoon. That was our conclusion. It was, this is a really fun Saturday project for an impulse purchase price of 20 bucks. So you can't go too wrong with it. And as long as you're not expecting a ton, it's a fun project. It makes your CPU more unique. And yes, you do get a couple of extra degrees, which if you were to try and stretch out the argument, you could say that that allows you to run your fans a couple of percentage points slower, therefore lowering your noise marginally. So there are some potential real benefits, but ultimately it's about having a project to do. And the conclusion is more or less the same with the APUs, but the difference between, in our testing, the Rocket Cool IHS for the R3-2200G and the stock IHS for the R3-2200G is much smaller. I mean, it's, it's about two degrees as opposed to four to five with the Intel one. There are a few reasons for that. One of them is that the R3-2200G comparatively is a lot lower heat flux than something like an 8700K. You're dealing with less heat, you're dealing with way less power, and there's a lot less to dissipate. So any differences are going to be smaller. Another reason that we don't see the big changes is because the design of the AMD IHS is a lot different from Intel's. It's, first of all, it's a pretty big IHS. And secondly, Intel again has these chamfered edges around it on the outside where Rocket Cool had some design liberties. They could eliminate a couple of those and modify it so that there's a bit of extra surface area for dissipating the heat, which helped out a bit, obviously. So at the end of the day, same kind of thing with the AMD one as the Intel one, just the thermal difference is objectively less in terms of measurable gains or improvements than the Intel option because again of the design differences and the power output differences. Ultimately, we still think it's definitely worth deleting the APUs if you feel like it, if you're comfortable with it, though the copper IHS isn't necessary. Deleting isn't either, to be fair. You don't need to do it. But if you're using it in a living room HTPC and you demand silence, for example, deleting drops the thermals enough that you could then drop fan speeds significantly. We're not talking four degrees here, we're talking more than 10. That ultimately meets the original lidded results if you were to lower your fan speeds with more thermal headroom, so you'd be able to have significantly quieter fans overall. Rocket Cool's D-Litter works great for this and is something that we can recommend. We've got a couple of them, so we'll show that in B-roll as well, but the Rocket Cool D-Litter for the APUs, we've used it a couple of times now and have had no problems at all in terms of safety. Quick recommendation on it, if you're going to use their D-Litter, we'd recommend that when you put the CPU into the socket, and start the D-Lid process with it, which is turning a screw. We recommend that you flip it over so that the IHS is down. That would be the AMD included IHS at this point, facing down. That way when the lid, the seal breaks and the lid comes off, you have gravity working with you, not against you. So the lid should fall away from the SMDs. There are a lot of surface mount devices on these APUs. That means there is some more risk of damaging them, but because Rocket Cool's D-Litter is an actual tool meant for this, you're way safer than the way we did it originally, which was a vise and a razor blade. So uh, pretty safe overall. And in the very least, again, you don't need to delid. You definitely don't need the copper heatsink. Neither of these things are necessary to use the processor as it is. But if you want some extra headroom, it's definitely worth it. Uh, the heatsink less so than delitting. Delitting is not difficult with this though. Just throw some liquid metal on it when you're done, reseal it, and you're good to go. 
And the IHS, if you want to just have something more unique, I guess throw it on there while you're at it. It's 20 bucks, no big loss if it's only a couple degrees better. So that's it for this one. Subscribe for more as always. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to pick up one of our mod mats currently on back order or one of the GN crystals that we just got in, like the one rotating behind me over here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.